Today's episode is going to be just a little bit different because I am so freaking proud of one of my clients who is one of my health coaching clients. Her dog has some severe food sensitivities and she is, she has put in the work. I am so proud of her. And because of that, and because of this particular case, I wanted to kind of delve into it a little bit with you because I think there are so many, I would say easily tens of thousands, possibly in the hundred thousand range, maybe even more dogs who are suffering from food sensitivities. So my hope for this episode in discussing this particular dog's case and going through what we did, you, especially if you are dealing with this right now with one of your dogs, or you know someone who is dealing with this with one of their dogs, or uh, you're just putting this information in the back of your mind for some day, that this can hopefully give you hope give you perspective on what is actually going on and maybe even give you some ideas on how to support that particular dog. So let's go into the intro and we'll talk about this dog with food sensitivities. Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Okay, so like I said, this particular dog is only about two and a half years old, and he is an American bully breed. He looks, I don't want to say like a mini, but he's definitely not like those large bully breeds that you see. He's, he's on the smaller side, beautiful silver gray coat. When his coat is, you know, grown in because with the skin irritation issues, sometimes you're going to get large patches of, of fur that are missing. And I mean, he's just, first of all, an absolutely gorgeous dog. And his mom is incredible. Like I could not have asked for a better client (laughs) in his mom. So what was happening is that anything this dog was eating, going outside and interacting with nature, pollen and grasses and weeds and trees, Everything was making him super sore, itchy, red, inflamed skin. So, of course, going to the veterinarian over and over and over again for the past year, year and a half of this dog's life, he has had cytopoint injections. He's been put on Apoquel, and nothing was helping it would help for a little while. And then the symptoms came back worse every single time. And the, my client, the, the mom, the pet mom was just to the point where she, and and this dog is only two and a half years old where she is telling the vet, like what I don't understand, why is nothing working? And the vet basically told her there's nothing more they can do. Cytopoint injections and Apoquel it is. And if you're not familiar with Cytopoint and Apoquel, it's basically they're inhibitors. They're trying to block histamine production so that the body doesn't create this red, itchy, irritated reaction. It, to, it, hopefully at all, but at least to some degree. The problem is that these are not long-term solutions. And over time, repeated usage for many years can be very detrimental to your pet's health in ways very different from what the food sensitivities themselves are causing. So we knew that this dog tested positive for yeast, and we knew that this red, itchy, irritated, inflamed skin 
was not only causing, you know, the itching, which is problematic in itself, the not so, the yeast is not smelling not so great, right? But also, he was very sore. There were times where sitting down looked like he would try to sit down and he was just like, nope, that's not happening. I'm too sore. So there were lots of problems. And so what we did was we started with a Glacier Peaks Life Stress Wellness Scan. And what this does, it is a saliva sample and a hair sample that you send in to Glacier Peaks and you get a report back. And this is kind of where I come in as a holistic pet health coach. Uh, when we got the report back, I analyzed it. I looked over everything and we saw on the scan where all of the sensitivities that this testing came back with. And so we take this information and we say, okay, this is our starting point. Now it may not be 100%. There may be things on this list that are showing sensitivities that he may not be sensitive to, though we're not going to go in that direction right now because he is sensitive to so many things. And then there, there may be some things on this list that is not showing a sensitivity that he could actually have a sensitivity to. And there are many reasons for that. Um, one of which being like, if it's a protein, what the animal ate could be affecting the meat that, that you're feeding, um, or glyphosate could be affecting the plant matter that you're feeding. Whereas that plant in and of itself would not be causing a sensitivity. The fact that it has glyphosate is causing a sense. So there's lots of underlying reasons. Like it's not black and white. It's definitely an onion. We have to peel apart. There are many layers, uh, which again, it's where I come in as, as her health coach. So we take this information and we created a rotation and elimination diet. And basically what a rotation and elimination diet does is we are testing different foods individually to see how they are affecting the dog, to see if over a 72 hour period, there are any noticeable signs of sensitivity, whether that is an upset stomach, whether that is um, a you know outbreak of red itchy skin. One thing I did with this particular dog, which I think made a huge difference up front, is before we started the rotation and elimination diet, we did a three day raw goat's milk fast. So we kind of reset his body. Now we could have done, done longer, um, but because this was kind of, I felt a very time sensitive uh, issue for this dog, we wanted to get through the rotation and elimination diet as quickly as we could. And giving the, each ingredient a three day span uh, was going to be time consuming enough in itself. So we did a three day raw goat's milk fast. And I, I want to just quickly throw in a disclaimer here before we get too far into this. While this is what I did with this dog, and it, it no way means that this is what you should do with your dog. Um, every dog, every cat, every human is an individual. And so part of what I do as a holistic pet health co coach is to individualize uh, my recommendations for you to then take and implement as you see fit with your pet uh, because they are individuals. But I wanted to kind of give you an idea of the impactfulness of working with a holistic pet health coach such as myself. So we did the goat's milk fast. We started the rotation and elimination diet. And what we found is that there were some things that were helping him feel better. He wasn't as bad off, but there were still quite a few things that were giving him these red, itchy, rashy, irri irritation outbreaks. Now, one thing that we did have to distinguish for this dog is because he was also full of yeast, we had to distinguish what was the yeast die off from what was causing skin sensitivity issues from food. So that was a big 
thing that, that I had to work with this particular client on to help distinguish between the two, because we have to get through the yeast die off. And while that in itself is horrible and we don't want to see it and it doesn't smell good and it can be very irritating for the dog, depending on how bad the, the growth of yeast was and how long it had been uh, growing in the dog, it can take some time and in itself is going to potentially cause skin irritation, scabbing, what, what looks like scabbing, um, because you know, the body is trying to heal and it's trying to push all this yeast out and the yeast is di literally dying um, inside and, try and then the body is trying to have to eliminate it and push it out. So in this particular dog, it was coming across as patches of fur were falling off. It looked like scabby skin was not red, but scabby patches of skin. And we were able to distinguish between the yeast die off and the red irritated symptoms of food sensitivities. And I just really commend this particular client for going through everything we went through with this dog. It took a few months to really get to the point where we figured it all out. We got the rotation and elimination diet dialed in. We completed it. Uh, and I say we, but she did all of the real work, right? <laughs> um, and figuring out what this dog can and can't eat at this point in their life with the sensitivities that they currently have going on. And what we found in the process is that it is very possible that this particular dog has a histamine intolerance. And that in itself, if we were dealing with nothing else, is difficult because when we have a histamine intolerance, there are lots of things we cannot eat. Uh, we really need to eat, well, we need to eat low histamine foods, but we also need to eat the absolute freshest foods possible because the longer a food sits around, so if we think about beans, if we think about canned foods, if we think about fermented foods, the longer these foods are sitting around in the can, on the shelf, being dried, being processed, whatever they're going through is creating additional histamines in the food. So not only did we have to go through a rotation and elimination diet with this dog, but we also had to find sources of foods with low histamines. And again, I just, the, the whole point of this episode is to really commend this dog mom for everything she has gone through. And, you know, part of my job was to cheer her on and let her know the good job she was doing. And I just spoke with her a couple of days ago before recording this podcast and I'm like, you are so incredible. Like, I am just in awe of everything you have done. You have done such an incredible job. Uh, you're such a great dog mom because this was not easy. And I know it was not easy. And the ultimate goal here, where, where we have gotten with this dog, is to create balanced recipes using the foods that he can currently eat simultaneously supplementing to help the gut heal because the reason that these food sensitivities came on in the first place, the reason that these symptoms occurred externally on the skin is because of something we call leaky gut. The gut was damaged. The gut was not functioning properly. It was creating pathways in which the body started attacking the foods he was eating, creating these autoimmune type reactions and sensitivities. So this particular dog mom has put in a lot of hard work over months 
and we have balanced recipes now for this dog and he is doing so much better. He is no longer getting the cytopoint injections. He is no longer taking Apoquel. He is, uh, I think we are, we're through, we're done with the yeast die off, which is absolutely incredible. And we are working to continue to heal the gut and providing him with a balanced diet of foods that he can safely eat without the body attacking itself basically and creating these symptoms on the skin with red, irritated, itchy, just ugh, feeling, right, that this dog was having and going through. And again, you know, I'm not, well, I, I'm, I'm here to support any one of you <laughs> who is in need of a pet health coach. Uh, this is really about the work that this dog mom put in because I am so proud of her for everything she has done for her dog. It is not the easy route to take, but as she told me, this dog is like her child and she has raised her kids and they are all doing well. And some of them have even left the home already. And now this dog is like her child and she only wants the absolute best for him. And she is making that happen. I'm so proud of her. So I wanted to kind of just give you an overview of what this is like. What is it like to have a dog who does have these food sensitivities? It's horrible. It is horrible for the dog to live with them to constantly be red and inflamed and itchy and feeling like crap. It's horrible for the dog to be just full of yeast proliferating in the body. At the same time, it is ex emotionally and physically exhausting for you as a pet parent to manage and deal with. And it is work. It is some work that you have to put in up front, as this particular dog mom did, to figure it out and help your dog heal. Help your dog, you know, give them the tools that their body needs to heal itself because our bodies are designed to heal themselves, but we have to give them the right conditions in which to do so. So it's a little bit of work up front for a huge payoff. This is a two and a half year old dog who has a long life to live. And if that dog were living this horrible, miserable life on Cytopoint and Apoquel for the rest of their lives, that is intensely emotionally and physically exhausting for you as a pet parent as well. So whether or not it is this particular issue that your pet is going through or some other issue, that uh, you are working with, with your pet, whether it is cancer, diabetes, kidney disease, whatever it may be, the, from the smallest thing to the biggest thing, adding in a holistic pet health coach to your pet's medical team can make such a huge difference in their life and yours. You know, I am not here to replace your vet. Your vet plays an incredibly important and crucial role in the healthcare of your pet. I am here to add additional resources to your pet's healthcare and provide you recommendations to move forward, hopefully with more holistic options to help you provide the right conditions for your pet's body to be able to heal itself. That's my goal. That's, I feel like I am finally in this. I, I have found in my, this is what I'm meant to do. This is my purpose. This is what I want for you and your pets. So if this is something you're interested in, reach out to me on social media. You can also go to my main 
blog website, jessicalfisher.com. You can book a call with me. We can talk about what is going on with you and your pet. You can make a decision if you want to hire me or not, if I resonate with you or not. Um, I think that this is such an incredible opportunity to help people bring bring people back into their power and provide them with a bigger toolkit, more resources to provide for your pets in a way that you haven't been able to provide with for them in the past. It's incredibly empowering. It's incredibly fulfilling. And that is what I wish for you. So whether you are the pet parent dealing with the dog that I just described in this episode, who whose body was literally attacking itself because of the problems in the gut and the leaky gut that he was experiencing, which allowed the yeast to come in and proliferate, or you're dealing with something else with your pet, I hope that you can find whether it's myself or someone else, someone who can help you give you more tools to create a more robust healthcare routine for your pet and provide for them in ways that you haven't been able to provide for them before. I was just recording another podcast episode with a guest and we were just talking about how nature provides but we need to know where to look in nature and we need to make sure we're providing the right parts of nature. And I am very much, I'm a firm believer in nature providing what we need, not just for us, but also for our pets and just knowing the right places to look to find those things. So with that, I know this was a short and sweet episode. Thank you so much for listening. I hope it was impactful for you because this, this particular case has been incredibly impactful for me, not just as a pet health coach, but personally. It is just so rewarding to be able to give somebody the tools to make such a huge difference in their pet's life. And she has. She has taken the tools I have given her and she really has run with them. And her dog is thriving in a way he hasn't thrived since he was a puppy. And I couldn't be more proud of her. So have a wonderful rest of your day. Please give your pet some extra love from me. If you haven't already enrolled in the online dog training program, that I have a special offer for you right now. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode. Make sure that you're following the show so you never miss an episode. And please take a moment to rate the show on your podcast app. I'd also love it if you'd share this podcast with your friends and family so that they can benefit from the information to help their pets live long, happy lives too. Don't forget to take advantage of this special discount as a listener today and get access to over 100 online videos and my online dog training, The Furry Family Coach. Just go to thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. That's thefurryfamilycoach.com and use code PODCAST at checkout to get your first month for only $7. I can't wait to have you join and see you on the inside. Oh, 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 oh.